asked, is climate change real or a massive con? World governments meet in Copenhagen next Monday to work out how to combat it, but leading climate scientists have been accused of manipulating data, lying and deleting emails to strengthen the case for man-made global warming. It's being called Climate Gate. So is it all over now? Those sceptics who thought it was all a conspiracy, have they been proved right? Have they? 0500 909 693. Do you feel conned? Christopher Monckton is a leading climate change sceptic and Phil Thornhill is the national coordinator for the campaign against climate change. Good evening to you both. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Phil, first of all, um, this is all devastating, isn't it? Um, it's a, it's no. a right mess. Do it is. No, Let, no, can, can I read you an excerpt from an email? I think it's obviously um, not devastating. Well, can, I, can I be quite honest yeah. to start with? Um, before I came, I was not sure really whether I should come on this program because when I heard the title, Is Climate Change Real? I was quite sad, frustrated and a bit angry um, because I think it was Lord Reith who created the BBC who said that it, its mission was to um, entertain and educate the yeah, public yeah. and people like me in our campaign feel that there was never a greater need uh, than now to educate the public on a difficult issue which is of the gravest importance i mean it, it's never been the case that an issue so scientifically difficult has been so important for the fate of everybody on the planet and, that and well, we, we, you know, we with us feel you, you know that there's an overwhelming scientific consensus that climate change is real, or if you don't know, you should. No, and therefore, no, I'm not an opinion. To title this program to give that. No, that's not know, true. And this is no, this is a, a pattern. This has happened quite a lot it, that we've seen this kind of thing in the BBC, portraying it as a debate when there is no serious debate in the scientific community. And I think oh, no, the no, no, taken by the BBC, you know, these decisions, pardon me, taken by the BBC have consequences because if we don't build the, the collective will in society at large to deal with this problem we are going to be faced with a huge catastrophe so we can't millions, have a debate millions of we can't people debate it are My going top to line, die. just give me a minute so decisions Phil. That give the me a minute Phil. I've heard your point will cost lives I thought, you know? and I think that's an important point we're not to writing make. an editorial and thank you my for top line me to make it my top well fine but my top line question here is is climate change real or a massive con why yes. can't we ask that question? Because because every time you choose to ask a question, it you know where you have a, you have a choice between asking one question or another one, and that choice has an impact on the debate. For instance, you could have asked the question, "How fast is climate change happening?" That's the real question of debate in the scientific community. You are giving people the impression that the real debate out there is about whether it's happening. But it is you not know. the real debate in the scientific community. It may well not and, be. And I have to reflect. The debate the that's going the on. The is to educate the public. It, that really isn't doing it. It is not the job of this show to educate people. We're here to have a debate. Are you part of the BBC? What is the purpose of the BBC? It, look, the, the BBC has many facets. It, 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 little Britain doesn't educate people. The BBC does a number of things. And we're here to debate things overall, that are in the news. Well, and we're having well, a debate tonight. let me tonight. say that overall I think it has a mission to do. And up to now it's performance in educating the public on this vitally critical crucial uh, issue has frankly been pretty lousy so this again to, to, to return your argument is one facet one small facet of a larger massive failure by the British corporate uh, casting corporation in my so view. it's the job the, the premise of our debate should presuppose that climate change is absolutely real there's no room for debating that we shouldn't even debate that anybody you can know. debate anything but what you choose to debate is, is is a choice that you take that has consequences it can be a political choice it can be a populist choice it can be anything but i mean that yeah. choice is an important well, choice it's a decision okay. taken by the bbc and it has consequences vince graff phil uh, uh, outside climate change do you have a list of other banned subjects that the bbc shouldn't even ever discuss i mean that's so, a highly question. disingenuous answer well, it's, it's doesn't answer my point, and well, it's, it's, it's just it's just a, just a poke. I'm saying that every time you take a decision, it has well, no, it's not though because and it's quite you know. Stop shouting! It, it should, stop shout! It should be okay for people to. Um, I'm shouting because you're well, talking not, over me. I mean, I'm, it, it should be quite okay for people to criticise decisions made by the BBC. That's what I'm doing. Christopher Monkton. Yes. You're trying to come in, I think, aren't you? Yes, indeed. Yes. Um, there is, of course, a very substantial scientific debate about the extent to which humanity is altering the climate. 
And I think it is fair to say that in the peer-reviewed scientific literature in recent months, there has been a very considerable movement away from the sort of rather alarmist and exaggerated uh, portrayals of the climate that we've been getting in the documents of the UN's climate panel uh, and also reflected by your other guest tonight. I mean, just to take one paper that's been published recently, uh, this is by Professor Richard Lindzen of MIT, who's been studying the atmosphere for 33 years. He's a tenured professor of meteorology. Uh, what he says is that he has measured using the Earth Radiation Budget Satellite the outgoing solar radiation from the Earth's surface going back out into space and it's getting out into space just about as much as it always did and what that means is that the UN's theory that the greenhouse gases that we're emitting are somehow getting in the way is much less true mm. than the UN had thought it was okay. and that therefore a doubling of CO2 concentration is only going to cause around half a Celsius degree of warming in the whole of this century and if that were the only paper to say that mm. One might say it was an isolated result, but there have been okay. many other you similar results over the last few months uh, in you, the peer-reviewed literature. You, the point okay. I want uh, to make are, well, well, are you a scientist? I'll ask you a question. Am I a scientist? Mm. I'm a, a, a classical architect by training. Uh, but I also have numerous mathematical inventions to my credit, including the eternity puzzles, for instance. And a, ger and a journalist. Um, both of which exploit... Uh, I haven't been a journalist for 20 well, years. Well, I, I, I remember when you were a journalist. Uh, uh, principles of mathematics that nobody else had spotted. So I do have quite a good mathematical track record, and I do give... Uh, lectures, seminars in uh, physics faculties around the world on this subject. I, I do have a reasonable reputation. I've even been published on this subject. Yeah. So uh, the, I know the, there, there, there is, there is, what it, I'm saying is that there is clearly in the scientific literature okay. a debate going on about That's fine. whether There's a debate, the which means there is also on the yes. climate is anything yeah. like as substantial as the UN well, has been saying. But as you say, well, Christopher, as you say, let me just come in there. Let me come in. As you say, it's a debate. So you also acknowledge there is an awful lot of scientific evidence which says, which points to man-made climate change being very real. I think that is absolutely fair. The, the, there, are, there are two points of view in the scientific community. There is one which says that we're having a large effect on the climate and there's one that says we're having a small effect on the climate and as best I can make it out at the moment in the literature the side that says uh, we are having a small effect on the climate is now the consensus it's changed okay. all right let's, let's we're going to take the news and we shall uh, take some calls so Christopher Monkson leading climate change skeptic is on the phone Phil Thornhill is here National Coordinator. Leading knocker of the BBC. Leading knocker of the BBC and National Coordinator for the Campaign Against Climate Change. Well, um, basically, OK, there's a few, say, like, headliney things. There's one that says, um, um, man-made climate change or global warming is the biggest lie in the history of science. And that 30,000 climatologists have signed a petition to say that it's a lie because all the figures have been corrupted. And... Um, basically the models don't work they haven't got the right information you know they're selective about the information they put into it the the earth naturally gets warmer and cooler anyway that it's doesn't mean that we can't add to it nick are, are you saying that thirty thousand climate scientists are involved in a great big conspiracy uh well no they just they're just speaking out because they know their stuff you know and the ipc um the ipcc is it is a political organization which is basically and um, there's a few reasons. Basically, selective about um, the, the the science that it wants to portray. But also, there was a lot of money thrown at it. So obviously, with the grants and mm. things that people so get. So it's all made up, Mick. It's all made up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. Bottom line. Made up it's by who? Card. Made up. Made up by who? And why? Well, it's a. It's a bit. I'm. I'm not sure the reasons <laughs> behind it, but from, I think taxes is a big one because mm. they're obviously they're creaming a lot of taxes. I mean, it's um, this, this thing that's been made up is costing governments billions of pounds, isn't it? Be an odd thing for. Well, uh, no, it's costing uh, taxes. Fantastically it's unpopular for governments. <laughs> they don't want to do anything about it. They're no. not going to make it up. A lot of them are kind of fighting <laughs> it's it. Bad um, news for governments. I mean, how many how many governments are meeting at Copenhagen? It's something like 192. 
who uh, all believe that global warming is, is uh, real. No, they Man-made. don't all believe that global well, warming is real, actually. There, there's certainly several that don't. The Russians don't, the Czechs I'm sorry, don't, Christopher the Japanese Monson, don't. but you're regarded as a laughing stock by most have, scientists. Have so I'm afraid that's just that, a, a fact um, that's there. They, and they, people they don't believe me, but they should consult the scientists. Everyone, 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 ever